Hey, what's up, guys? This is Joey Natolo, Space Between, and my co-host, Eddie Donaldson. What's up, Eddie? How you doing, buddy? I'm wonderful. How about yourself? I'm good. I'm good. Um, just here to talk about uh, mental illness and spirituality. I think that over the course of the past couple interviews, we've been touching on it. Well, obviously, we've been touching a lot on it because we've been uh, kind of interviewing people and going through it, but talking about through it through my lens. And I thought it'd be interesting to kind of have you back and really talk about how we collided uh, back about three years ago once I, uh, I told you that one of our best friends who had drank himself to death and died had decided to come back and communicate with me and how, how you processed that information that I laid on you <laughs> that day. Yeah, it was, it was deep. <laughs> It was deep. I mean, I think I touched on it a little bit last time I was here, but, you know, Bally was obviously a kind of a ground wire for a lot of the things we were going through back in the day, and it seems like he's taking that position again uh, in, a, in a weird way, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it was definitely a trip when you came to me and you were, like, the most serious businessman I've ever known that was always really accurate and acute with your the way you handled things, and all of a sudden you were being led by faith. It was definitely different. Yeah, that's what I'll say. You know... The thing is, it's a trip. Is at the time, and I, at the time when I saw you, we were there was a there was a separation. Us hanging out. I obviously was ma got married, had four kids. We yeah. but we we saw each I other. Saw you. Yeah, Lisa had brought me to the house for a couple holidays yeah, yeah, yeah. or whatever. And we but there was obviously you know uh, there was there was gaps in time in between that. So, you know where I was having four kids, um, produced films, built houses. I, I created a comfortable situation for myself and my family. Um, and ultimately to feel that I was really in a comfortable place, very in control of my life. Yeah. You yeah. know, uh, to say the least at that time. And never in a million years. Like, I'm a dude, bro. Like, I mean, like, you know, it is what it is. Like, what I see is what I know. Yeah. <laughs> I started getting a little more sensitive, picking up on, um, I'd say, mostly the w really the way I was feeling. And I didn't understand. I felt like some kind of, like, I felt like I was mood swings. Yeah. To, be to best, yeah, describe it. Yeah, for real. Um, but then I leave and I get in my car and I get real emotional. So I start crying and I'd be, I'd want to get it out before I got home because yeah. I wouldn't want my kids or JC to see. Um, but it, it, it was intensifying Yeah. to where I, yeah, I couldn't, you I were didn't. getting in tune with your intuition. Something was missing. You needed to do something different than what you were doing. I'll say, you know, your life was very black and white one, two, three. And now you're like living this geometrical space life. It's definitely very different. But, you know, the thing about it is I feel that everybody is, has access to it or is, uh, can, can access it. Yeah. Because that's, that was the other thing looking at it. And I think for my family and the people, my friends, was because of the, the, the way I lived my life before that this was not at all anything within, you know, within the realm of possibilities yeah, of as course. me being a spiritual dude. Yeah, I'll never forget when I sat down with JC at uh, Soho House, she was like, Joey hasn't called you in 10 years. Why do you think he called you? I'm like, I have no idea. I don't care. I'm just going to be here for him. You know, she's like, but you, you don't even come to the house. Like, you guys don't hang out. What's going on here? Why you? And I'm like, I, I don't know. You well, know? that was, see, that's the whole trip is that, like, that, that gap of time. There was yeah. so many things that went on, and she probably in her head was thinking because there was no one else, but specifically Jeff. Yeah, my, this who's is my not dead here. friend. Who's he's not, not here. here. Yeah. He's 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 passed on. And then this dude you used to straight up said to me, "You need yeah. to speak to Eddie." And yeah. at the time, I was like, "Wait a second. <laughs> I get it. But I think our relationship. I think we both, you know, we identified on this talking another time is that everyone has the ability to, to connect to their intuition or t on esoteric levels, right? But it's just reality that scares us away from that 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 unknown, right? But I think me and you, the way we met we had a serious bond and relationship from the get-go. We, we trusted each other with the utmost right off the top. You know I think I mean? exactly that what you just said and that reason from doing things the way we started from doing dark shit, yeah. you know a certain way about somebody. So yeah. I think at that point when I came to you, I, was, I had nobody else. I mean, I, everybody else in my life at that point thought I was batshit crazy. And you mean Garen wasn't trying to take you to yoga? No, he was trying to stab me, <laughs> fucking idiot. Um, 
Sorry, I didn't, shouldn't have brought that up. No, okay. but, and, but, but I think it was scaring everybody. Ultimately, I think it was scaring everybody and because of the way it used to be, I was, a, you know, I, I was very controlling and manipulative. And so because of that way, when you start, you know, if I raised my voice before, people would just be quiet, you know, or, but if I started raising my voice and I was saying this other shit, yeah. they'd be like, he's acting crazy. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you have people pointing guns at you. Yeah. S so it's that, that, that misunderstanding. So also the same token is, is when you start to hear, turn your fucking phone off, Eddie, is when you start to hear <laughs> um, something or feel something, better yet, feel something and you're used to the way things are because you've made yourself very comfortable. That was, that was the thing for me that rocked me because the first thing is I thought is, okay, I, I gotta, I'm, maybe I'm dying because why would somebody from a different realm, spiritual. Yeah, group. how can I connect all of a sudden right. unless I'm on my way there? Right, I so my, the best way my brain connected it was, like, well, I'm going, Dad. I'm, I'm, I'm going to drive my truck off a cliff. I'm trying yeah, to figure out a way. Come. How, yeah. How's it coming? How's, how's it, it going? Go? Yeah. And so you, you rule out these, these different things. Your mind keeps on kind of ruling out because you're trying to figure out if you're fucking nuts yeah, or not. what's going on. Right? Yeah. And you don't, but I didn't feel crazy whatsoever. It didn't feel, I felt, felt good. Yeah. But ultimately, I, the things I was saying, it was scaring people. And then when it was led to, you know, they, uh, my, my dead buddy Jeff says, go talk to Eddie. And I didn't understand why. And I didn't, it, it, it really was confusing to me. That part, because it wasn't like, go talk to Brian Oliver. Go talk yeah, to someone who you've somebody some like real straight up good some, business with. Yeah, yeah. Like, go back to a darkest dude yeah. and some other dude that yeah. was like, it, dis, it, didn't, it didn't compute, but I listened. Yeah. And that I mean, was for me, for me, back in the day when I would when I would get a deja vu, like a feeling of deja vu, right. I would always think something bad was going to happen. I'd always be like, "Uh oh, I'm going to get hurt, or I'm, I'm going to get in a car accident, I'm going to, or I'm going to die." You know. Well, those are those. Okay, look. But now I identify with them very differently after going into yoga and to in Kundalini and kind of figuring out that that you know those voices aren't bad. You know, because no. I used to think those voices are bad. If if I can't see it and it's telling me something, it's scary. Well, Chaz said this morning, my son goes like this. He goes, if I ever, I, I'll kill myself. I don't want to hear any voices in my head besides mine. I don't blame him. But, but it, it's normal. Like, it's very I normal. I don't blame him. It's, uh, uh, that's the thing that I think the mental illness is when people start to have these, these awakenings. And a lot of times they'll say they hear voices, and that's a problem because that's when they'll say you're schizophrenic. It's more of a feeling. Yeah. You feel it. Yeah, it's your intuition. You know, but also, too, it's like this. If I... If I was talking behind you and I walked in behind you, you couldn't see me, I'd say, Eddie, you'd feel me, you'd feel me in the room, but you couldn't see me. Yeah. Same, it's the same. Same process. Same process. Yeah. You know, you, you feel those people, you can feel who they are, their energy, um, and that's how to differentiate one from another is you have that feeling. So, but the issue was, is I was trying to explain it to doctors and I kept saying, um, I'm hearing it. So they'd say, what do you mean you're hearing it? You're hearing voices. You know, then yeah, these voices telling people. you to do bad things. That scares people. Yeah. I think that's the only way we know how to articulate it. You know, it's, it's in a, it's, we're limited in dimension when we're here on, on earth. We don't think about all the possibilities and we don't understand all the different realms of spirituality and communication, you know? So we say here because that's the only word that we know how to define what those intuition or those feelings or those moments where you have a realization of something. It's like you with the goosebumps, you know, it's like. I've I've looked up goosebumps a lot and read about what they mean when it comes to music, and it's a feeling. It's not anything else but a but like an intake of energy or feeling that you get. But we de we define it as something that's explainable because that's the only way we know how to do it. Because well, the whole thing it's got to make sense. Yeah. If it makes yeah. sense scientifically, then it's it's then that's yeah. Well, what it's, we go it's, on. it's like it's this, like like when I when we f when you know to, to to take it back. You called, you were, sounded like you were out of your mind. You said, I need to talk to you now. I'm like, what do you mean now? You're like, now? I'm like, today? You're like, yes. I'm like, well, when? He goes, lunch. I go, okay, well, meet me after class, because I was going to class. We met at the Chateau, and when I was looking at you, it didn't make sense. You know, like you said, none of it made sense. I'm like, this ain't the Joey I know. So then we went to see Tage, and I introduced you to Tage. And I had to tape to Tage, like, listen, sorry, I don't know what you <laughs> think about what he's going through. I go, he's a super smart guy. Everything he touched turns to gold, so there's got to be something here. I just don't know what it is, and I have no one else to, to take him to. And she said, oh, no, nothing's wrong with him. He, he's, he's great. 
he just has all this energy and this information being downloaded to him and he needs to have the tools to manage it. That, and that, that right there, th that's why we're sitting here, obviously. Yeah, of course. That specific time right there when I met her, it was this switch or the change that, that obviously got well, me Well, yeah, you know it. what you told me after? You were like, I'm not alone. You're like, you don't understand what this means. It's like, I, I thought I was crazy. I, I thought I was alone because my wife won't even talk to me. Like, no one will talk to me. And you go, you're like, thank you. And I was like, well, okay, that's cool. Let's see where it goes. Well, you that know? was the, honestly the first, I, I never felt I was, cra it wasn't I felt I was crazy. I was waiting for somebody to tell me like that they're all crazy. Yeah. Well, that's what happened. Right? She said to you. Because everybody, and I knew it. I'm like, they're, they're either all plotting against me right or something because i know i don't feel crazy which is then you start to feel that the, it's even worse because now you feel that everyone has something on you because you're like I, i'm not crazy but they're all saying the same things this is oh uh, this is some kind of conspiracy against me then you start to act weird because you don't trust anyone yeah, at that point defend take a defensive totally, a defensive posture yeah and you don't you i didn't know who to trust at that point because the people that i did trust were were my family and they were only trying to help me they didn't understand, but also think of, I'm, I'm telling them I'm hearing these things in my head. It sounds absolutely fucking nuts, but it didn't feel, it didn't feel crazy whatsoever. Um, and the more that I started to kind of go into it, the easier it was to take me away. And then I just, I did feel like I lost my sense of being here, let's say. Yeah. You know, where they, people say you need to be grounded. You, that's that, that's why they say it. Cause euphorically you do feel like it can take you away it's a different kind of feeling and you you have to have very solid grounding and people around you to help you with it or to make it to make sense of it because when things don't make sense at all you start to lose traction of, of what is real and what's, what's not. real and what's not yeah, yeah. Tej always says when we, well not always but a lot of times we'll do class she's all everybody put your feet on the ground after we do something crazy she's like because i don't want you guys to get out there and just get lost well it's it's in it's insane the things that we take for granted but you, but you don't really not even knowing it. So think about with us on the street. I really, all I really thought I had was a just a high sense of intuition from street, being on the street, and being yeah. very sensitive to, to my surroundings. Being aware. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I think that, so we all have it. I think that if you put me in a, or anyone, you or anyone in, in a more extreme situation, they're going to be more sensitive to their surroundings. The more that you change, the more you, you, you'll adapt to that surrounding. Yeah. So I think that a lot of people now, um, with time, I feel that all these things are, that I, I look at us as, are, as instruments, that from ancient times, we just forgot how to use them. Yeah, no doubt. Right? Well, it's a bit, yeah, I mean, that's a big thing. That's, you know, People in power don't want us to be able to identify with those emotions or feelings because then we do things that don't make sense, which takes us out of a realm of control. Well, that's like the Chinese government in Tibet. That's absolutely right. It's absolutely right. It's like Jay-Z hit it on the, net, on the nose when he was in his thing with the uh, interview with Dave Letterman. He's like, you know, we as men, you know, and it's who we, we're men right here in, on Earth. We haven't been really taught, or at least I haven't really been taught, the skills for how to manage my relationships in my life. You know, it's like, what can I get from you? I'm going to get as much as I can from you. That's just how I enter sit, entered situations for most of my life. I'm going to control the situation. If I can't control it, if it's not going the way I want, I just bone out. I'm just done. I just leave. Right? But I can see, I, have, I do have the sense of sensing danger or situations that are going around. I can look at a person and see if they're shady. Because those are the kind of elements and the kind of characteristics that I spent most of my life identifying with or being around, so it's easy to see it, you know. It's well, it's around. It's it's when your friend calls you, or you know, and you go, "I was just thinking about that person." It happens. It can happen more and more. Tuning into that that vibration, um, and I think what it was is I just w at the time that these changes happened, and I was able to identify what they were. It was the same way I went after money. I saw I. It, I looked at something else and I was like, wait a second, I thought this was it. I thought it was money, houses, a house on the hill and the Cadillac Seville. Yeah. Like for real, like that was it. And then someone goes, wait a second, there's something else going on here. And I looked and I'm like, oh, I gotta figure this out. Yeah. So that's where I felt like I gotta shift or change my crosshairs, right? Yeah. And I was just pointed the wrong direction. Yeah. 
but ultimately that wrong direction really helped me kind of gauge and understand the reasoning for what is happening and why people find their path, let's say. You know, people say, what's your destiny? What's your path? Why do you, what is it that you're trying to find? How do you get into your chi, you know? Um, I felt that once I went through that awakening process, it helped me understand myself much better, who I was, um, identifying with other people and how they feel. Um, so the awakening process point of it was, uh, was interesting. It's what everybody else pointed out to be crazy and had all these symptoms and were pointing and said that, what I was, that I was losing my mind, I'd brain damage. I mean, some wild shit. Yeah, I mean, I was there. But ultimately, so this is for real. The most amazing thing that ever happened is it was, was going through that awakening. Now, a lot of things I did scared people, but I needed help. Um, and I think that by having a platform for people going through that uh, is important because these, these symptoms mirror schizophrenia, they, s they, they mirror bipolar, uh, a bunch of different, you know, if you have panic attacks, a lot of times you start to, I, I mean, as a kid, I would go into restaurants um, and I would go in and I could just hear all the talking, all the chatter, every single fork leaving the plate, every, all the yeah. noises, and it would shut me down so bad. And so they thought that I was attention deficit disorder. I couldn't be around groups of people because my, I would shut down. Yeah. So at the time, I just, you know, they thought I was, I was you know, I had issues or I had problems. But I was just highly sensitive to the things going on around me. Um, but I, was, I learned to work with it. I think through business, I used and on the street, was able to use that as my as an edge. Oh, big time. Yeah, for sure. I mean, trust me. I was, uh, I, I, I kind of feel the same way. You know, I went to private schools my whole life, and I was, so I was always like the guy getting looked at the most because I was the only black kid in the room, right? So either it was good or bad. Like, oh, he's black and he's cool, or he's not cool because he's black. So I'm, I was always kind of like had a little bit more of a magnifying glass on myself. So I used to always behave as if I felt like someone was watching me, even when I was alone, which is weird, right? But it's that me having that awareness of every move or action that I take, it impacts how someone else feels or thinks about who I am or what I'm doing. It's you know? And that leads us to the next, well, for me and something just as a friendship with you and what friendship means. And I think I, for me to identify that, I, it, I would use this, this relationship as, as something to point to just because of the things that we did together. Um, coming to you in a time where I felt I needed somebody the most. And I'm not trying to like get sentimental. I'm just being serious because if people don't know really what friendship means, they should define it and then they can understand it because for me, it's good, bad, and they're indif it's all It's all in between. It's all the different things that happen between people because you were the last person that I probably thought I'd go to at the time. And I don't mean that with disrespect. No, I understand. But I, understand. I, I mean that like. I get it. You well, know, I was the last person I thought you'd call. That's why I was like, right. why and am so I going to stop uh, what I'm but doing? But it's funny because it's like, you're like, wait a minute. This is the dude that's going to help me? This guy, wait, you wait. The, Back, wait, back it yeah, up. You're like all the resources I have. This, this is, is the, the one I'm so you choose. You're, so <laughs> this is thing. What, what might think someone's crazy? Wait, you're spinning the thing, and I'm going this guy here. Yeah, it, and it's funny the way it works because ultimately that's why we're sitting here. That's how I got to Tage, and that's really what most likely saved my life at the time because I didn't have a really good understanding at all of what was happening to me, and I did feel that I didn't feel crazy. Now I want to understand this. I didn't feel crazy, but I did not understand what was happening. So I don't know how you define that well as crazy I, I, or what I mean, that I'll, is. I'll be honest with you. There was times where I was like, is he crazy or is there really, is he really hearing these voices? Because, you know, when we were, you know, jumping over hoops, jumping through hoops and over, you know, through puddles to feed people, I was kind of like, what are we doing? Like, is he really, is he crazy? You know, I'll be honest with you. When it was pouring rain in Venice and we're feeding fools, soup i'm like there's something may not be right here but it's just because i couldn't see what what we were doing or that you know that mm -hmm. lack of physical understanding i guess uh, and what that was at that point right there was that connection to spirit and uh and following another ted bit of information that was given to me that probably yeah. saved me again so when i went to the first mental institution I'm sitting there, and it was a wild spot. People tripping, biting themselves. It, it's an interesting place. It's very, the, it's it's interesting. Which one was this? Uh, I forget the name of it. 
it was a it was just it was just a nightmare. I'll remember the name. I probably forgot the name purposely. It was yeah, horrible. As you should. So the first thing I did was I went and I took a knee in the shower once they, they had me checked in and everything. And they were saying at fifty one fifty and I'm sitting there going, God, I can't believe this is happening. And not and I'm still talking, waiting for answers back from Jeff. Yeah. So I'm at going this point and they're saying I'm crazy. My dead friend's telling me I'm sitting, I'm asking him, what do I do now? Give me, I need, if you're talking, yeah. I need help right fucking now. I'm tripping, bro. <laughs> I'm tripping. And I just hear, be of service. And I'm like, be of what? Be of service. And I'd heard that before in an AA class. I'd heard it before, but I just ignored it. Didn't really understand what it meant. And at the time, I didn't know what it meant when he said it, but I really had nothing to fall back on. So as I got up, I remember hearing it in my head, and I guess at that point, I started walking around and cleaning up piss and shit. And yeah, you were helping the people in, inside to. the institution, talking to them, trying to figure out what's wrong with them, Yeah, figuring out how when they get out, you're going to help them, doing what Joey does, problem solve. Yep, but it and helped me And allocate resources, I get it. And it helped me out. And as and, and soon as I got out, I was I, I was thinking about you. That's where I found Carol Moss. Was I was in there? It's not even kidding. All these all these things happened when I was in there. So I had to believe that what had happened had to be that I was going to be led on this path to either feed yeah. and help people, and that's how we got led to start feeding these homeless people. But I didn't have direction and why I was doing it. So it seemed very manic and very yeah, out sporadic. there. Sporadic. Yeah. It was sporadic. I'm not yeah. Sure. But I mean, but like I said earlier. Everything that we did seemed like it fell into place at the right time and at the right place. Like even Carol's meeting, like I can't, I remember we went to meet her and it's like, you're like, you were going to go meet this lady, Carol, you're going to love her. She feeds homeless. It's great. I'm like, okay. Then we walk in her house and she's 80 or however old she is. And it's like, it was all perfect. She had the, she's a Buddhist. Like she just, the, everything went exactly the way it was supposed to go when we walked into her house. And it was amazing. And that's, I think that for me was my breaking point when I was like, okay, I need to put my seatbelt on and kind of like stop asking so many questions and just because you're always like, don't worry about it. I got it. And I'm like, OK, sure. But when we left her house, I was like, all right, I'm in for the ride for sure. Because that's that's I think what the, the people say they call it flow. And so little things that would happen synchronistically that would go into the next one that felt like, yeah, this is very like comfortably moving into. Yeah. Yeah. And by I the way, my graffiti name is synchronicity. I like that. And you know yeah. why? Ian named me that because I'm always on time. There it is. Yeah. So. There it is. Last time you were here, you weren't on time. Though. I was not. I was not. The uh, the other thing that we did was after I was able to manipulate him to start feeding homeless people was um, Eddie. Eddie goes, let's do an art show for homeless. And, and at the time, I didn't even realize. Uh, and I knew Eddie was into graffiti and art, but I didn't, you know, realize he had contacts to some of the biggest street artists in the world. Um, and that led, that feeding those homeless people led to me and, me and Eddie doing our first art show together, uh, which was in 2017. Uh, I that think so. Yeah, it was 2017. 2016. Yeah, but that's, speaking of Carol Moss, that's the thing. You're like, we get in the car, you're like, we're going to pitch Carol an art show and we're going to do an art show for her organization. And I'm like, okay, cool, let's do it. Because you're like, now all the pieces are here. And that's what I'm saying. That's when it clicked for me because we weren't sure about most of the things we were doing. We were just doing them out of faith. But when that happened, it was like the physical met the spiritual. And it was like, okay, because she was like, oh my God, I love this idea. I can't wait. It was like, just yes, yes, yes. And we're like, okay, that was great. And then we showed her Retina's work and we showed her Saber's work and some other people. And she's like, I really love this. You know, she identified with it. And it just worked, worked, you know, it worked out well. Did. I think um, one of the other things that, that worked out well is with this is, is how I see how, how we work together um, and how this sits together, how this whole situation. Because I really see it as two points of view. Um, and the reason why I said earlier, from one side of the door and the other, one being from one, I, I feel that I'm, I'm a very awake human being. I'm not saying that you're not, saying that I just ha went through an awakening and I'm on the other side of a door. But I think that my view and your view on these things that we're talking about are so interesting because I feel that you're like knocking at the door. Yeah, Meaning I am. It's like one of those things like. I am. I don't know if that's why we came today, but we can talk about it. I mean, I, I definitely have 
jumped into the faith and I believe in all the all, all of it, but I'm definitely moving slower and still operating in a in an earthly manner in a lot of ways. And I think every a lot of people are. That's the but that's the that's the the beauty behind it is to be able to to have these conversations, I think, and and to to bring attention to some of these things like the mental uh, health issues and people going through this um, to have a platform to come and listen to and, and maybe have a, a, a second opinion, so to speak, or have something, a, a different set of eyes on something or well, that's great. Ears. Good, that's a good, a good way to put a second opinion instead of a doctor's second opinion. It's just a humanly second opinion. Right. And yeah. I don't even think they, they don't even know what to do. Yeah. You know, if you go to any doctor, they don't have a real idea of what to do with you. If you go in and you're having an awakening, they, they'll, Diagnose it as schizophrenia, bipolar. They get, there's like ten different. Yeah, well, things I mean, if, if you think about the idea of awakening, right? It's like, in your case, everyone thought you were lost. Lost. So the an awakening is almost like the opposite of being lost and awakening. They're the two. It's like almost two opposites, right? It's and so if anybody doesn't know what they're doing, or let's say you're a, a movie mogul, or you're a real estate mogul and you're like I don't want to do this anymore I just want to go do something that helps other people P the world deems you as lost or crazy like Tom Shadiak yeah it's like Jenner, Kanye West uh, Jim Carrey uh, Russell Brand you can keep going you hear some of these guys talking this madness it sounds like madness, madness right? but in reality but, but if you listen closely yeah it brings it back to the essence of who we who we were right? before we were caught up in the circumstantial lifestyle that we live right and that's what I think is what we what we've done is we've forgotten how to use our instruments and these are ancient you know secrets tools. we have going on tools yeah, they're ancient time. tools that we're given and and i now that i see the the things that are accessible within one um it's definitely interesting and so to tie into it and how i how i figured that out is through yoga and through kundalini yoga um and balancing that energy yeah well i mean i think a lot of times people you know, you spend your life working, hustling, grinding, making money, whether it's legit or illegitimate or it's right or it's wrong or fair or selfish. You know, you 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 after so long, it's it's been so much so much work that you want a relief. You want to release. You want to find yourself in a, a much more relaxed environment in your own life. And, and in that circumstance or in that situation, you can't do it. So you have to come to where you are or to where other guys that you mentioned have gotten where it's just kind of like you don't follow the normal and you do what makes you feel good because that's what your intuition is telling you to do and s being of service is a big key to that you know and it's probably where save our souls came from mm -hmm. you know like when you said that it was sounded really dramatic to me i'm like save our souls like i'm like okay i, don't, I, I you know and and now still it's it's a little dramatic of a of you know if you think about it but it, it but it does make sense it's like you know in order for your soul to feel better you have to do things that feed your soul and making money doesn't always feed your soul no it doesn't at all and i think that's the disconnect yeah in 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 uh but the 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 funny thing is is when you start to help i can't even tell you how that changed uh, the the way i saw things saw everything because when i heard that be of service it already tired me out like yeah as <laughs> 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 soon as they said it i was like fuck that sounds it tiring like, yeah it is like, like what, do, what do I gotta do? <laughs> I gotta do some. Shit. If I give him twenty bucks, can he do it? That's funny, and I've learned a lot from you and other people in my life on how to do that. Because when we sold drugs and did the shit that we did, you were somewhat of a mentor to me because you made more money than me. I worked for you. I learned from how you handled and moved in situations. And now that we're here, I'm. It's the same thing. You now we're you're guiding me. And now we don't sell dope. Instead, no. I hope no. But okay, now, good, good, good. but <laughs> but in this new in this new chapter, it's like you're still guiding me and you're still mentoring me through this spiritual process. You know, I appreciate that. You know, th that's 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 the whole thing I was saying about uh, even when you do the stupid shit or when anyone does, because one of the things I always hear people that are conscious is they'll say about another person that they're not in alignment, and I always kind of wonder, well, what does that mean? Doesn't that seem that's judging? That's judging right there. What do you mean they're they're behind? They're in forward. Like, what does that mean? They're not in the line. They're not. I understand what they mean, but everybody's always at a different point in time or different place. Yeah. And and I think the whole thing is is to be okay with with everyone where they're at, 
you know, when you start to put someone on a different level as you, um, it changes everything because we are all on the same level. And I think that everybody's so used to following somebody, a yogi, a guru, you know, whatever it may be, that ultimately it's really looking inside yourself. Yeah, you are your own guru. You saw that movie. Yeah, it's, it's for real, though. Like, yeah, all those right. answers all fall within underneath, you know, yeah. your, your dome. Yeah. You know? And then long as you're, you're paying attention to your antennas and your information, you'll be guided to the things you need to be guided to. I agree. And my antennas are guiding me to talk about um, the art show that's coming up. Let's do it. Let's do it. So now we're here, and we've decided to embark on another, another, sh another road trip to have an art show and a festival. Um, so that we can touch people, and I don't. Maybe I take that back. Re rewind. Start over. I don't want to touch people. I'm yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> so we've embarked on this new journey to to do another art show, and also add a music element by you know by way of a festival, in in essence. So we're reaching out to usual suspects, right? Yeah. Except this time we're going to go a little deeper and try to work with people like Alex Gray and Amanda Sage, and obviously Retina again with the beautiful board that's here. Um, How's he doing? Well, he's great. He's, he's, he started on a new body of work. He's kind of evolved a little bit from what we're used to. And, and I think more emotion is coming out in his work and more of who he is as a person with this new brim thing that he's doing. Um, we don't speak as much as I would like to, but maybe you can help change that. Okay. Maybe your antennas will guide you to get him in here. We can talk to him. Yeah, as long as he doesn't stab me in the neck with a pencil, I'm good. I'll Delete good. that part. <laughs> <laughs> Delete that part. Um, no, I think he's a, he, he's amazing. He's a great artist. Um, the uh, the art show too. The the money and what we'll be raising awareness for is what we're talking about right now, which is mental illness and spi spirituality. But we want to definitely touch on the mental uh, illness aspect of it because a lot of people that are mentally ill um, have the same issues and find themselves homeless. Well, you know, there's a lot of successful people that are mentally ill as well. You know, and I'm not. I, I don't. This next thing, but is it really? That's a word. See, that's a, that's where we have to change it. Mentally ill. When you say the words "mentally ill," yeah, it's that's tough. like sounds like something that they're about to die. They're mentally ill. There's like so people. So, so we right change that. You know, there's a lot of successful people that suffer from what society deems mental illness. But why suffer? I don't uh, know. So let's use another word there. Okay. So I think that if we actually start using different wording, even when the way we talk to each other. Like, really think about that, because the intention of what you say is real. Even when someone leaves and you, you say something, you might not think about it, it's real. If, yeah. if water has memory, then a human fucking has memory, okay? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And water does have memory. Yes, it yeah, does. excited about the upcoming show and the artists that will be involved. You know, Joey's reached out to some good people like Amanda Sage and Alex Gray. We got the retina board uh, that was finished, the second retina board that we have. Yeah. Dave Navarro from Jane's Addiction and Chili Peppers is going to be involved in the show, who actually has a does a lot in, in for, for the cause with Music Cares and other organizations. Hopefully, we're going to have Brandon Boyd from Incubus in the show, who's a good friend of mine. Uh, Hebrew Brentley it should be in the show, or Bentley. Brentley. Brentley. Yeah. Slick, OG Slick, hopefully will be in the show with the Mickey Mouse hands. We got Jim Evans again coming back, who is, is going to also be on the show, hopefully. We got Cisco Adler, uh, the Prince of Malibu, uh, Swayze's boy, going to hopefully be in the show again this time. One of my favorites that will be in the show this time is going to be Pops Asoy, who is Christian Asoy's father, who is a wonderful man, super spiritual dude, and he's a great artist as well. So and maybe we'll have him do one of his son's boards, as we mentioned. W one thing I'm really excited about is one of Marley's editions, which is Brandon Bruh, which I guess is the Bruh. guy that does all the, yeah, bro or bruh, who does all Sad the Chance Bruh. the Rapper album covers. That, is that uh, someone that has has you know has a good message for you know, sure. from a spiritual perspective so the show should be good what's that girl's name that we just were talking about aoki oh you know what i'm talking Aiko about Aiko. something she does that song i don't love you but i i don't hate you but i love you or yeah we got to track her down something like that yeah we should it's probably a do really a better version story. of that real quick um did you talk about assist oh yeah that's right now the show the upcoming show yeah, you know, well, which Carol Moss is going to be the Grand Poobah of help of help. It's Grand Poobah, right? But yeah. the organization that we'll be looking to 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 give some funds to, funds to right up our alley of what we're doing. It's a nonprofit that helps train prof helps train wellness professionals 
how to recognize and help individuals who are going through an awakening experience versus just trying to shove meds on them and identify them as mentally ill, yeah. but actually helping them with their transition, correct? Absolutely. Or their awakening. Yeah, I found, I, I woke up, uh, it's one of those middle of the night things and went to my computer and pulled this up and I was fascinated. There was all these other doctors and uh, therapists that were spiritually trained and I was like, wait a minute, this is something out there? So there is, there is other um, help or other resources. Yeah, it's coming. To it's coming to people to that are going through these do going through these uh, these changes, um, and I think that assist would be a great um, way to to, to help. Did, didn't I? Didn't I? Uh, didn't I hear you say the other day something about yoga being accepted by insurance? Well, I, I thought that would be. I, I wanted. Yeah, I thought. I think it's better than an idea. I think that if we can actually put that to. Uh, that I'm losing my train of thought right now. Well, I think there's yeah. hospitals actually right now that are recognizing yoga and meditation as a form of therapy. The, are they in there which means I would believe or assume that it's some insurances are actually, you know, allowing you to use those as, as help. I think that that there is some that do. I think that it, it should be much more widely used. Yeah, I think of that if you s if you did the analytics on people that are getting sick, if you actually <laughs> looked at ninety. To 100 people or whatever, d they're doing yoga over the course of a year and looked at how many times they, they visit the hospital v versus people that aren't. That aren't, yeah. So it. UCLA Medical Center, I know you're in the business of pharmaceuticals and, and treatment versus cure, but let's get a kundalini wing at UCLA Medical. Really? I mean, think about that. Think Might help. Yeah. Even even just for the people who are, the, 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 the people who work there, you know, imagine if your doctor could take an hour long break and go in and catch a quick class. I mean, the, the amount of energy that you'd be, f the, the difference in the energy you were feeling after you left the class to go and actually talk to somebody or help out a patient would be amazing compared to like, you know, cramming a sandwich in the mess hall or whatever, you know? Right. But what, what, let's take it even a step e better than that. They could write a prescription. Yeah, yoga, no doubt. Right. Yeah, I love so that. So what they do is they say you should do 30 yoga, uh, Kundalini classes. I think what you're going through is an awakening. You don't seem crazy to me. It seems you look like you might look, be acting crazy, look, but look. let's do. Look, yeah, you got bumps on. I got on? a shot. I got a hit. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you what that hit is. Joey actually told me you need to do more yoga, and he bought me 10, 20 classes. That was my prescription. I still haven't used them all. Yeah, this is three years ago. No, <laughs> it's not <laughs> three years ago. But it was a year and a half ago. So, yeah, I haven't been as much as I'd like to, but maybe I'll start using my prescription. Yeah, uh, well, look at it. I'll tell you this. It, it, you, I don't think for me, I didn't. I, I, I never was a yoga. I, I, the only time I stretched was when I surfed. But... I see the the physical, my physical difference that it does for me. Yeah, of course. You know, and I, I know that it does help me balance the energy that I pick up on. So, ultimately, it's something I feel that would be able to help a lot of these people um, uh, that are going through these changes is uh, uh, Kundalini yoga or another another form of yoga, but any type of body. Any type of meditative yeah. practices help. But Kundalini yoga, I recommend. You know, and not for nothing, but I use a breath of fire more than you think. Like, I, when I'm driving in my car and I'm starting to get a little frazzled over some shit that I can't control, I start, <laughs> you know, and it calms me down. Or I'll get my Wahi Guru on and people are looking at me like, what is this fool doing? And I'm getting my Wahi Guru on right. loud in my car. And it's like, it kind of gives me that little break that I need from whatever I'm trying to control. Yeah. No, I did that. Um, it's funny you said that. I did the breath of fire. I was in my car and I started doing it, but I didn't realize <laughs> the the intensity yeah. that I was doing it at. And yeah. I got, hot. I mean, I, I had to yeah, pull over. Yeah, you got a little dizzy. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Big time dizzy. It can get to you. Yeah. It can get to you. But I mean, I definitely, you know, one of the songs that Tage plays in class, it's that's the group, like, Wah, hey, guru. I put that on all the time. And when I'm in traffic on the freeway, people are looking at me. Some people are like, they'll give me the nod, like, all right, bro, good job. And other people are like, What's wrong with that dude right there? Um, right. I want to tell everybody thanks for tuning in to the Space Between. And thank you, Eddie Donaldson, for uh, joining us today. Yeah, and thanks thank for you having me. Hey, for sure. And uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, talk to you guys next week. See you uh, two and two. Satnam. Satnam. <laughs>